Hi, my name is Anaya, and I'm going to discuss the contemporary problem of energy transitions. We're in the middle of the Anthropocene epoch with the central feature of enormous use of fossil fuels. The contemporary pro problem of how this of this is how fossil fuels have made the environment worse and how energy transitions can be a help for the environment. The problem is connected to culture, politics, and of obviously the environment. Um, the cause of the Anthropocene the seen epoch has been the use of fossil fuels based energy systems. The concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere can track the progression of the Anthropocene, which you can also see in the graph shown. Um, this is where energy transitions can help the Earth system. Um, statistics shows that renewable energy can achieve 90% of the required carbon reductions. Um, to get through these technologies, changes in social values and individual behavior are crucial. It is changes like reducing consumption of energy, water, amongst individuals, households, and communities. Um, and this is where political and cultural aspects come into play. If all countries, for example, don't accept the climate change agreements, um, we will see risk instead of rewards. Um, and looking at the cultural as aspects of individuals, on the other hand, start to change the way they consume, eat, and dispose of waste, it may lessen the progression of Anthropocene, and the picture shows, for example, how you should handle waste properly. Um, as mentioned, if we keep using fossil fuels and ignore the global warming, we will face risks including sea level rise, more wildfire risk, etc., and climate change stakeholders can include food banks, water services, flood management, um, etc. And these these stakeholders, they're chosen because climate change is affecting food production by changes in adverse temperatures and rainfall, heat waves, and with shrinking, shrinking glaciers, um, it increases the likelihood of flood. So this basically makes up for the reasons why these stakeholders should care deeply about um, this problem and the graph shows uh, change, the global temper change and how much this has changed through, from pre-industrial period. Um, the discussion going on right now is then how much energy transitions can produce and people doubt their efficiency. Um, and analysis shows that they complement each other really well. Um, solar power, they work really good during summer. Um, wind power work during spring and fall and also during night as well. So. Um, and yeah, this clean energy power can literally power an entire country. Um, and and as an example um, of use of this energy, Denmark Denmark set a world record in 2014, producing 40% of their overall electricity needs from wind power. Um, and this gives a really good example of yeah the huge role energy institutions will have in limiting climate change. And if you, as you can see on the graph, Denmark they use a lot of renewables. Um, yeah, there's then been there's a growing concern for climate change, and with continuing innovations in renewables, there's a lowering price of these. Um, prices from Chinese solar companies have decreased by 62 percent the past few years, um, and you can see that cheap renewable energy will really become a competitive advantage in the future. Um, and even though they're but even though they're getting cheap, investors and energy firms are still failing to put money into these based on political problems. They find them too risky because of skewed tax relief, um, fossil fuel subsidies, and renewable incentives. But yeah, as a conclusion, um, energy transitions, they are a better source for electricity and people should care deeply about it because of the potential risk of not using it. As mentioned, like they are very successful in especially European countries and this means that they can be successful anywhere. Hello, my name is Seamus Anderson, and I'll be discussing part two, the historical context. To begin, we'll discuss a little bit of the history of climate science. It was discovered in 1824 by Joseph Fourier, and he discovered the greenhouse effect, which would lead to later scientists discovering that the carbon and CO2 emissions caused by burning fossil fuels negatively impacts the environment and the atmosphere. Energy transitions are also a major topic we'll be discussing today, and those are basically caused by environmental concerns and switching from non-renewable sources such as fossil fuels to more new renewable sources due to these sources running out. A steady increase in energy transitions as you can see we have transition from coal to oil then to gas then to new renewables. This graph here on the right will show the amount of time that it takes as it does take 
a long time for us to transition from one energy source to another. You can also notice that we do not completely get rid of any listed energy on that graph as well. One example of switching to a new energy source was in Chernobyl in the Ukraine when they switched over to a nuclear reactor. At first it was relatively well received until one day the reactor core blew up due to inadequately trained employees. This led to two workers dying on site, 28 people died in the following weeks, and also the chances of the people in the surrounding area of Chernobyl to develop thyroid cancer. There's a lot of opposition towards energy transfers as the history shows us. There's a lack of trust. There's also a lack of knowledge based around energy transfers. People don't understand how the transitions themselves work or how the new technologies work or how they will work in the future. This basically means that due to the skepticisms that people have towards energy transitions into cleaner energy, that they will not be successful as they were not successful in the past. They will continue to be opposed and energy transitions must become a convincing enough replacement to the previously used fossil fuels for people to want to switch over to the cleaner, newer energy sources. The problem with energy transitions themselves is that they cost a lot of money. Solar panels in the past have been very expensive as one example shows. Distribution is also very difficult and transitioning takes a lot of time as also shown by the global energy population chart on the right. Our population is rising and so is the amount of energy we take in, so finding a new supplement will be hard. The pros of transitioning to a cleaner energy it has reduced air pollution, it has slowed global warming and the emissions caused by burning fossil fuels, it's created a whole new industry in the technological side of things, it has also diversified the power supply and it also has helped to decrease the dependence on coal and other fossil fuels. History has shown that this does work. In 2015, as you can see, Sweden moved to 100% renewable energy and has been successful, as are the other examples that I've listed there. 78% of the energy in Germany has been coming from renewable energy sources. Scotland has wind terminals out in the surrounding oceans that have also been producing large amounts of energy. And as you can see there on the right, the graph shows how the renewable energies post up against the non-renewable energy sources or the fossil fuels to be more exact. In conclusion, what this data tells us and what the history tells us is that fossil fuels are not renewable. That is a fact. They will eventually run out. We will burn through them. Clean energy will be essential as we are destroying our environment as shown by Fourier. And the transition to renewable clean energy is a very long and difficult process as shown by the skepticisms previously listed. And although history has shown that these transitions are difficult and hard to get through, it has also shown that we are on a path towards destruction and we must make these changes to be successful and to keep going. I'm Heather Schaffnett and I'm doing part three, the future. Current crises in energy do show a surprising amount of damage to the planet as a whole. But much of the data thrown out during these discussions of fossil fuel dangers fail to include the ramifications of these actions continuing into the future. Thus, the future of energy can only be understood when paralleled with our current trajectory, possible technological applications, and research on how these technologies can be applied. Understanding our current position in this climatic crisis, humanity as a species must formulate solutions to escape the impending consequences of fossil fuel exploitation. Despite even the best efforts to avoid disaster, it appears the trajectory of current solutions will still lead to some level of danger to a variety of ecosystems, causing species loss and further damaging the environments used for agriculture. Even if all people lived with a high standard of energy efficiency and an extremely low ecological footprint, a total of 3.5 Earths would be required to fully support their level of resource use. Calculations examined in the implementation of petrol and diesel by 2040, despite the massive drop in fossil fuel usage, still show a 7% increase in carbon emission, which is quite close to the current projection of 10% if nothing is done. A complex web of political institutions, energy security concerns, fluctuating energy prices, technological developments, Constituent interests and leadership preferences disrupt a smooth transition away from fossil fuels, leaving 75% of modern energy use reliant on non-renewable resource uses. Resources. 
Fear for the future is extremely valid, as most scenarios are assume our reliance on fossil fuels remains substantial. Not all hope is lost, however. Despite the bleak future and society's difficulty in abandoning ecologically harmful practices, many forms of technology are curating a foundation for a more renewable future. Fossil fuels are known to be environmentally damaging, however, often overlooked is the danger in retrieving and storing them as economic instability that arises with world markets so heavily dependent on them. Despite its current impact, other sources of energy may soon take its place. Eolian energy, or wind power, is expected to become a dominant source in the near future, though its presence is currently most prominent in Europe. Hydro energy currently produces 80% <laughs> produces 80 of energy from renewable resources, with solar power at a stark 3% to compare. Many believe that nuclear energy should be the push to the future, stating that it's the only durable future energy source as the other natural resources, such as oil and coal, are about to finish. Prospects for the future remain quite uncertain, with massive socio-political obstacles making a renewable future seem only a fantasy, yet some still believe this feat could be accomplished in the next few decades. A comprehensive study across the entire United States showed that with a proper mix of wind turbines, so solar photovoltaics, concentrating solar power, biopower, geothermal, and hydropower, National energy consumption could be 80% renewable by 2050. These prospects become even more viable when one considers the application of these principles being used at their maximum potential. While some doubt the power of wind and solar energy because of weather, using these ecological patterns in the location they are placed to the advantage of these resources turns the problem into a solution. Progress, then, is entirely dependent on a cohesive United States to improve international energy consumption. This level of organization is difficult to implement and held back by a variety of cultural and economic factors, though. Much of them, public, still heavily disregards climate change as an issue, choosing rather to listen to the ideology of their communities. Social scientists agree that the rationality of individuals is highly dependent on those who surround them as people would rather choose to fit in and follow a larger group than become an outcast for an issue so distant and impersonal like climate change. Economically, a complete energy transition will be, obvious for, will be difficult for obvious reasons. Renewable energy will require a complete upheaval of current industrial infrastructure, a massive abandonment of most current vehicles, or an adjustment of transportation system as a whole, and brand new systems in many residential and commercial buildings to accommodate for the technology. Where the ideas are present, the implementation is not. In conclusion, a complete energy transition will necessitate a practical observation of a variety of socio-political factors. Our current trajectory holds a dangerous future with massive environmental damage only furthering the issue of resource overuse. However, despite these obstacles, the future is bright with potential when said technology is implemented around the needs and climatic conditions of the area.